things that I think Nebraska really likes and should be aware of about Colorado in its 31-26 win against North Dakota State in their season opener kind of come into light now because, A, when this game is 20-17 to and you can see that North Dakota State has brought their game, at least offensively in front seven, the secondary still burnt toast, you're looking at this and you're going, wait a second, we need y'all to be 1-0 coming to Lincoln because that game is already going to be on national television and that game is one for which Nebraska hopes to really reassure the rest of the country that the way that some pundits, myself included, have been talking about them is for real. It's the truth. They are good. Good being they're going to get to six, seven, eight, maybe nine wins. You look at the schedule, it's not hard to see Nebraska being undefeated by the time they get to Ohio State. But one of the big games for them to show that, it's not going to be Utah this weekend. It's that's Dylan Rayola, Rayola's coming out party. That's what we want to see. We want to see him have a big game. It's going to be against Colorado because the Coach Prime hype machine is going to follow them to Lincoln. This is also a game that they lost, but it felt like they could win it if only Jeff Sims could take care of the football. With Dylan Rayola, that should not be a problem. And he is the most touted true freshman quarterback of this decade for Nebraska. Like, I... I I really want them to have this opportunity to show what Matt Rule has been building the last couple of years and what a tremendous victory it was for them to get Dylan to flip from Georgia to Nebraska after having committed to Ohio State, then Georgia, and finally to Nebraska, and then win the starting job. Marcus Satterfield, I think, is a great offensive coordinator. Truly, I, I really do think that, and I want to see Nebraska do well. So if you're watching North Dakota State play Colorado, one of the things that pops out to you is, yeah, Shadour and those wide receivers are scary, particularly Travis Hunter and Jimmy Horn Jr. Will Shepard and LaJonte Wester didn't really get to do much in this game, and neither did Dallin Hayden. While Shadour and Travis are Shadour and Travis, those are two guys that are going to have to put this program on their back because it doesn't feel like a whole lot has changed from an offensive or defensive standpoint. While you're going to have to give Travis every bit of bracket cushion you can, you're going to have a safety over the top of him everywhere you're going to go. You're going to have a linebacker that is going to check him for the hook curl. You're just going to make Jimmy Horn beat you. LeJonte Wester beat you. Will Shepard beat you. And Jimmy Horn's like, hey, dog, I had damn near 200 yards receiving in game one. I'm here for it. So that's one, right? you got to be able to keep a lid on your end zone, and I don't know that the secondary in Nebraska can do that, but we'll find out. The other is, you're probably going to have opportunities to score, and when you do, you need to take advantage of them. You need to go get six. I was not overly impressed with the Colorado pass rush against North Dakota State. There's, It's not as good as I thought it was going to be. They had a hard time really getting to Cam Miller, and I think the two-quarterback system for North Dakota State actually slowed them down. I think misdirection is a big part of getting that defense to really – commit to overbiting. I mean, you're talking about running backs that are having big gains. You're talking about drags. You're talking about things coming across the middle that probably should be covered if you're back in zone. It just felt like the middle of the field was there all night for North Dakota State, and they were working it, right? If you're able to do that against that Colorado defense in Lincoln, it's going to be a long day for Colorado because, frankly, Nebraska has better players than North Dakota State. I don't know if it's a better team. That's what we're going to find out. Robert Livingston has a lot to figure out on this because North Dakota State picked up 449 total yards and averaged 6.5 yards per play. That means that the defensive coordinator has changed, but the overall output and production of the defense has not. You still can't stop the run. You still can't. I mean, they gave up 292 yards pass in North Dakota State. That's not great, man. I'm also looking at this going, okay, if you're Nebraska, you're going to have opportunities to get big plays you're probably going to have opportunities to go at some of the weaker links on Colorado squad. And if you've got Colorado on the back end, you already feel good about this because Travis Hunter played 129 snaps, most of them on defense. He's going to keep doing that, it seems, all year. And I'm just not certain that the dude can hold up for an entire year playing over 1,000 snaps again. It feels like one way or another we're going to – find that show up. I understand he's getting treatment. I understand that this has always been the program. I understand that this is what it is for Travis Hunter to be at Colorado playing for prime. 
but the human body playing football at that level for that long. Like, I got people that are coming at me because they don't want to see the players playing 17 games this year. Nobody said a word to me about Travis Hunter going both ways, playing damn near 1,200 snaps back-to-back seasons. Nobody said anything. It's as if it doesn't, it doesn't matter to them that one of the stars in the sport, one of the superstars in the sport is wearing his behind out before he gets to the NFL, right? Like, I, I realize that that dude is built different. I realize that he's talented. I realize that he's got a level of stamina that is really unseen in this era of football. But you got to take care of him. Like, that's, he got to get to the NFL. Like, I was thinking about Joel Embiid as I was thinking about Travis Hunter. When I was covering OU men's basketball, Bill Self had Joel Embiid. Didn't get to see a whole lot of Joel Embiid in the Kansas Jayhawks uniform, but the back thing was just popping up, and Bill said, nah, you got to get to the NBA right now. You, you got to go right now because he was right. You know, you got there. It took him a little bit. He still got some issues, but you get to see an MVP playing center for the Sixers and one of the great NBA players of our time. That's where Travis is headed. I think you just got to take care of him, right? That, that's the thing. Same thing with Shadur. Again, we don't talk about it enough because I don't know that many people know, but like he broke a vertebrae in his back last year because he was getting hit so much. He got hit 199 times. I know everybody knows the 50 sacks, but the getting hit part, that's the part that sucks. He's also getting hit against North Dakota State and taking unnecessary hits and taking unnecessary risk. Throw the ball away, dog. I'm emotional about it because I want to see everybody be the same. I want you to have the same level of health and safety awareness for Travis and Shadour that you seem to have for everybody else in the sport. That's what I want. I hear it all the time. Hey, we're playing too many games. Hey, they're still college kids. And I'm going, have you seen Shadour and Travis? Have you been watching Colorado and how often they play and who they play against and what risks are being taken? I mean, I saw – on Twitter, it was a it was a joke. It was a joke, but the joke was, you know, that offensive line is bad parenting. I think Prime would like nothing more than to have a Joe Moore award-winning offensive line. I just don't know that he knows how to build one quick, fast, and in a hurry because it's really hard to build an offensive line quick, fast, and in a hurry. Like, it's the one group that it feels like you have to develop over time. And you got to recruit not just Jordan Seaton, but a bunch of Jordan Seatons. And you got to have them all on that offensive line like you do at Georgia when they're great, Alabama when they're great, Michigan when they're great. Joe Moore award-winning offensive lines usually go hand-in-hand with teams that play for national championships, and that just ain't where Colorado is. The last thing I would point out about this is if you believe that it takes coaching more than it takes talent to win, you're probably going to pull for Nebraska in this. If you believe in players, not plays, you're probably pulling for Colorado on this. However, I think there's room for both here. I think you can be great schematically and have great playmakers that make you right when you were wrong, right? Like, that's that's what great playmakers do. I give this anecdote about Will Johnson at Michigan where he's big enough to run with big, tall, tight ends, big, tall, wide receivers, but he's also fast enough to keep up with small guys, which means that if he guesses wrong on a pass, he's fast enough and athletic enough to make up for his mistake. That's what you want at every position if you can get it because – I mean, basically, football is a version of poker. Once you get down to your film review, you know what their tendencies are. They know what your tendencies are. You're just going to try to upset them one or two times and win those and then not make any more mistakes along the way. It's a real poker game. In those moments, if you got a trump card, if you got, damn, I'm going to pull up a full house on the river, that's just what it is. That's that's what Travis Hunter is. That's what you do. I guess I should probably stick to spades on this one, but – they got Big Joker, Little Joker over there. Do you have Big Go- Joker, Little Joker? Can you read Can you read across? Can you not talk across the board and still get this done? That's where I'm at here, man. I'm very excited about this game. I really am interested to see what Dylan Raiola can do against that defense, against that secondary. And I'm really excited for Shadour Sanders to have an opportunity to do this once again. And Nebraska-Colorado is a rivalry game, but now it feels like one because if Nebraska keeps up its end, which I have no doubt that it will, and beats UTEP, we're all going to be focused on Nebraska versus Colorado next Saturday. And my goodness, two five star, uh, two, two five star, a five-star quarterback and one of the best quarterbacks in the sport going at each other. It's going to be so much fun. I'm here for it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below, and we will continue to talk about this game as it gets closer.
while you're here, consider subscribing to the channel. We are this close to 100,000 subscribers, and that is an and that'd be a tremendous deal for me. Um, if you like the channel, subscribe. If you don't like the channel, subscribe. Let's just get to 100K and then continue to talk about football right here because this is this is awesome.